Shirt Show. All right, let's go. Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Talking Shirt! Shirt Show! Shirt Show! All right! Episode 123 of Shirt Show! We're talking with Scott from Elite Inc. of Iowa. Let's go! Good morning. Good morning. Hey, guess what happened yesterday? Mm. Oh, 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 sorry. You were going to tell me about your rough day. Then we'll get to mine. Mine wasn't rough. So let's go to you. Let's make your was, day. Let's fix I this. I don't know if it was necessarily rough. It was just a lot of HR issues. Hmm. Okay. And then, Those are uh, the best. Yeah. So I spent most of my morning doing that. Mm-hmm. Wasn't anything bad, really. Uh, we're just kind of going through a shuffle here the new press like who's gonna run what and who's gonna do what um Mm -hmm. so kind of played around with that a little bit and then uh one of my main customer service people is about to go out on maternity leave at the end of the year Mm. so we had a discussion about that because she's like uh what are we gonna do because like you know the girl at the front it might be leaving and she's gonna be gone and then it'll be just sarah and then i'm like well luckily it's like during slow season so hopefully it's not that intense but so now i might have to hire just went through (laughs) now i might have to hire somebody new right now to like cover the person leaving and then get her trained or him trained before morgan goes out for maternity leave so it's like, yep. Uh, let's figure all that out. And then uh, my screen guy's been out of town because he does Comic Con, like whatever. He has like a media pass. He does like interviews and stuff. So he's been at Comic Con for most of the week. So me and Bill went out and ran the blue water and cleaned a shitload of screens. So I've been doing that the past two days. Yeah, the whenever you know you get pulled into the shop, like production, let's say, or, or anything mm-hmm. to do with the production, it's it's always tough. And because you know you've got other stuff to do, obviously, because, yeah. you know you have a, a role there. And the best thing though is when you do get pulled in, that like for example, in auto reclaim, it was auto reclaim. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you're able to like that saves your butt. You know, it was like the best feeling, you know, we talk about on the show all the time, how automating things makes it better for us as an owner, because Mm -hmm. like it's, it's the ease of use for anybody. You know what I mean? Like a new hire can walk in and like figure it out and just do it. Mm -hmm. Like part of Rich's job is to like burn screens and coat screens and all this other stuff. And like Bill and Zach and because most people here at Cross Train, they were just like, "Oh, I just went and burned my couple, like a couple jobs for myself for tomorrow." And like, they did like all the processes. Like, I didn't mm-hmm. have to say anything. I didn't have to hold handhold. They just walked in to the eye image, burned a screen, fucking did the whole thing. Good job. Um, that means you're, you know, you're successful in and having people, you know, Cross Train. Just like you said, I mean, that's not easy. It's awesome. It was just yeah. like a good feeling to being like, oh, like they got it. It's taken care of. And also that they stepped up, you know, because yeah. sometimes yeah. you can cross train. It doesn't mean that they're going to, that that person's going to, you know, fill that role. So, but it was nice to, to, uh, run the machine because I, f- I found some things that I want to tweak and fix. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think I'm going to get one of the, your Frank racks. Oh yeah, the the way the sideways they, rack. Yeah, the vertical. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can either order just the regular rack with you know on casters and then put it, I guess, horizontally sideways. or sideways, yeah. or you can just you can or what I did is order them, you know, custom built f- for our space because we needed wanted a certain size, and then when he did it like that, then he doesn't put wheels on each one or casters on each one. He just puts them on the bottom one. You know what I mean? Did he raise <laughs> them? Like, are they off the ground a certain amount? Yeah. So the, you know, I have them three high. Uh, one of them we have two high, but uh, we have three, three highs. And so, um, and they're screwed to one another. We can unscrew them, you know, yeah. and then separate them. But we have three, three highs. One of each one is for a different mesh count. So we have 
one for 158, one for 180, and one for 230. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because it, we used to be we would run screens through and just put them on the racks to dry, and we didn't know which right. screen was what or where they were, and you'd have to go, kind of go look. Um, but I was going to say, oh, yeah, on the bottom, on the very bottom, two of them, the original two, because we ordered uh, a one, another one after everything but the original two have casters but pretty big one i would say at least five so inches they're, so they're like five six inches off the ground already correct just because of the casters yes but the 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 last one that came in has in the front like six inch five inch or six inch casters and in the back like three and a half or four so it kind of so it's tilted yeah and so with the water the idea is uh, obviously the water runs out you know off of the trays and it's That's smart they're both you know we could pull the casters off of the other two and do the same thing. We were just testing sort of like to see how, you know, they worked. Do you like that better? Good question, because we've only had <clears throat> the one that's tilted for maybe a month. And so <laughs> I haven't had time to ask that question, but I'm glad you brought that up, though. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're neat. I love them because sort of you know our problem was is that we were putting them into the just the tip normal racks and they were drying flat which yeah. dries obviously slower and, and trips through the middle and then also sometimes a little bit like if you don't get every single bit of chemical then it can you know cause havoc in your uh, when you're coating you know what i mean yeah yeah so well, we were doing them to run off is way better my thing yesterday was that we had a bunch of screens that we had, had saved for jobs that we kind of do quite often. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. mentioned to him like two weeks ago, like, hey, these screens can be reclaimed. Like, we're done with this job. This tour's over. It's not going to happen again. Go ahead and clean them. He just didn't get to them yet, which isn't a big deal. But I ended up washing those first because I was like, well, I'm going to get rid of all this shit that like I know is done. But the thing is, is like, right. <clears throat> if you leave a screen for a long time like it's harder to reclaim like the you mm -hmm. know the plastic is more dried the tape doesn't come off as good you know there's just more issues with like running through the machine or whatever so pretty much all those i had to like dip run through the machine and then either dip again or spray with 701 let them sit and then hit them again just because they were so baked on um that I pretty much just had a routine for all those screens to just like run them through the machine, take them out, black, uh, pressure wash them, put them in the rack. So they didn't get air knives or anything. So by the time I got done with all that and everything I was doing, I was like, you know what? It kind of would be nice to just make a routine of probably the same as what you're doing mm -hmm. is run it through the, the Ecotex, give it a flood rinse and just check and make sure everything's out of it and then put it in your vertical rack. <clears throat> so I think I'm just going to like get a vertical rack and just be like, Hey, this is the process for every screen, like dip it, run it through, give it a quick pressure wash, put it in the rack. And then where are they going now uh, after the air knives or whatever, where do they go? Well, after the air On knives the they come out, they're just, no, they're going in a, in a, like a, a normal horizontal rack okay. and then they get wheeled into the dark room to dry. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you mean before they get emulsion? Yeah. They go into the dark room to dry before they get emulsion. Okay. Why do you do that? Because you want it to be dust free or something? Yeah. You know? <clears throat> hmm. I want to make sure they're in a room where they're not going to get linty and pinholey. And... Well, that's good. Only you are rolling them. Obviously, you know you're rolling them in there and creating more humidity as yes. they dry, which maybe you need because you I know do. your eye image situation that might even be beneficial. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. especially here mm -hmm. in this season, now that mm -hmm. we have the heat on, like it gets dry as fuck. So the heat on, the heat is on. Shh. Okay, dude, it's like forty this morning. It's October, like, like one. Yeah, three, I five, be seven, if it, whatever. It the is. weather says snow in a week. No. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not true. You're making shit up. <laughs> no. Uh, the the oh yeah. So so man, that sounds that does sound pretty hectic but it's fine it's cool did you have did did you have this happen i love that attitude that's fine that's cool you know Me that's through. that's the dylan way and that's what um i've uh that's one of the things i love about you thanks is you know you're not a w you're not a diva mm -hmm. you're not a mm -hmm. diva like me uh but no so is you know all that stuff i i get it but did you have this happen to you yesterday Joanne and I ran out for a minute 
And when we got back, uh, Jerry says to me, hey, uh, somebody was here looking for you. And I said, oh, okay, well, who, who was that? And he go, he said, your long lost son. <laughs> I said, okay. And you know, um, I guess when somebody says that to a guy, that could be true. If it says, mm -hmm. if you say that to a girl, you're, she's like, well, she pretty much knows if she has a long lost son or not. So you had oh. a mini heart attack and you were I was like, like, wait, what? And, um, you know, um, I said, do they ask for Andy? Cause you know, or who, who, who do they ask for? And he said, they asked for the owner. I was like, okay, shh, that's probably, that's better. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then I said, how do you, like, how old do you think he, he was? And he said 30 or something. <laughs> so I'm like, well, that's older than my, even my own kid even. So this is getting less likely to be my real son. <laughs> you were free and out. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. So did that happen to you? <laughs> no, I, it mm -hmm. wouldn't happen to me because, uh, it's not possible. Oh, that's right. You are neutered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where's this conversation going? <laughs> king, king of the bailout, bud. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you don't have balls. I didn't know. I yeah. this was I was just taking a guess and you said yeah. <laughs> well I, um Chad apparently, edit all of this out. No. Nope. This kid apparently this you're fucking kinda... spreading your seed all over the US just waiting for children to show up. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Maybe somebody out there can relate to that. Mm -hmm. And Joanne was right there. And she was and, like, oh, really? Huh. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. What was that? Oh, this isn't really, I mean, it's kind of related, but what wasn't there that documentary that, oh, sorry. Did I say that wrong? Documentary. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? How, how do you say it again? Documentary. Yeah, that's that's a good. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, came mm. out. That was like the whole town was related because the oh, fertility yeah. doctor fucking mm -hmm. put his seed in all of them. Yep. Yep. That's so that's, creepy. That's you. No. No. <laughs> this is just one. <clears throat> this is one. Okay. Okay. Well. Uh, any other news this week? Any any new developments? We're he so I'm not alone here at the shop today. We yeah, are. Yeah, what's going on today? So we've got uh, check in three people checking in, and oh, we're printing. Um, what's it called? You know, tag tags, tag sheets. Okay. Yeah, one press printing tag sheets. Mm. <clears throat> You're um, just a little behind playing catch up. Yeah, it's hard to, well, you know, tags are its own thing. It's a, yeah. it's, 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 uh, you know, you really have to focus. We do anyway. We should just order them. We should just order transfers. We really you need to be. just switch you, to I, that. I have been so much happier mm. ordering transfers, uh, DTF tag transfers. Like, cause you can just do a roll, like an infinite roll. Yeah. Um, like seriously we probably have 30 screens maybe more for tags you know because what what we used to do is have a screen with a distribution of sizes so let's say yeah. it would be small maybe you know, a certain too. amount of each thing yeah well now we have a screen for like every size i don't know why but kyle decided that was the better way to do it probably because if you run out of one you can just easily print a yeah. bunch or something but we could get rid of all those screens and also just the hassle of, you know, the paper and the dust and the dryer yeah. and speeds mm -hmm. and the whole thing, you know, it's. That's our thing is like, realistically, like I looked at it and like, I was the one that was going out and doing tags because everyone else had their own task on press and I didn't want to delegate somebody to being like, oh, you have to go print tags. I did that mm -hmm. for a little while, but then I just like, I, I'm like, oh, I'll get to it. And then I forget. And then oh, I'll right. get to it and I forget. And it's just ends up being a thing that it's like. Oh, I got to hurry up and go print some tags. And it's like, now the protocol is basically like a job comes in, gets added to the schedule, says it needs tags. Brian lays the tags out like he would make steps or whatever. And then he mm -hmm. drops it in a drive to this lady who does our DTF. Yeah. 
and she fucking prints them and ships them to us and they're here in a couple days and then it's like they're done and ready to go like i don't have to think about it ever i don't have to do anything like they show up and then we heat press them like we would anyway okay how long do you press them for by the way because I think that was uh, one reason why we decided to keep with uh, our instead of DTF to keep printing them because it's quicker, a quicker transfer. Because you can do it in like what five to eight seconds or something. I think it's six. We're running it at six seconds. Yeah, I can't remember it's, what they are. I think it might. I want to say it's yeah, it's higher. I don't know. That's ten's not bad though. But the other thing too is you never have that like oopsie one where like you mm-hmm. didn't get enough powder on it or it right. was too thin or whatever. It's like true. I don't know. It just they're nice, and just plus just uh, taking up press time. It's just it blows. Like it's no good right. because we saying. don't have like if you weigh that out, out, like mm. especially now that you have uh, Eric's mm. uh, East West machine, it's not right. like you're the couple seconds matter because if you're doing one, you're doing another because you're just sliding it over mm. to the next one. No, it does because we've always had a twin transfer press. Um, mm-hmm. So it would slow us down if we had to wait more than six seconds, you know, a little bit. Yeah. If 10 seconds, mm-hmm. though, is, isn't bad. And so that's what we're doing here today. And we have, I mean, dude, it's, it is our busiest time. Like this is October's, our maxed out month. We're getting more boxes in than we can check in and then we can print. And, you know, I heard that, I mean, because a lot of shops are like this. I heard that SNS actually shut down New Jersey. I want to say like that Why? they're because they're so busy that they can't, you know, um, pull just like stop ordering from here for a little while. So they can yeah, just give up. us 24 hours to, you know, there were so many orders that we need 24 hours just to even get to the That's end crazy. of them before we can receive any more orders, you know? And so, and that's probably due to, uh, you would have to guess, I guess maybe it's a combination of things. It might not just be too many orders. It could be labor shortages or something, mm-hmm. you know, like that's who knows, but this is a busy time of year for, for a lot of shops and, and for ours, we, this is our, it is getting cooler here, you know? So it's definitely hoodie season and, oh, yeah. you know, it's fleece fucking every other orders fleece at this point. And what that does to your shop is, you know, 24 only 24 to a to a box and there's the mm-hmm. boxes are giant and Way there's more boxes. boxes oh dude it's uh just moving boxes around now has become a job again so yeah I'm not complaining just explaining it's it's good good stuff yeah but it's just you forget you forget because you're in t-shirt mode for six months or whatever and all of a sudden it's fleece cool. again mm-hmm. yes sir so uh you know what we got here beautiful a lot of uh a lot of build up Mm -hmm. me too frank you came in hot on that one yeah i don't know what came over me but just felt like it It all starts with a screen, and whether it's new stretches or restretches, Frank and his team do it the best. Hell yeah. Usually you say something right there. Yeah, there it goes. They do, yeah. To find out more, go to graphicscreenfashion.com, F-F-F-F-F. Rank.com. Or. Greatfuckingscreens.com. That's Frank. So next we have Easyway. And cleaning screens is no fun, but Easyway makes it funner. Their line of eco-friendly chemicals will help you keep your screens and your shop clean. So check them out at easyway.com. Easyway. It's the easiest way. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. And I I had to use a bunch of Easyway when I was reclaiming yesterday, and I was very happy that I had a good Mm -hmm. chemical to do it with. No struggles. Did you rub any, like, on your face or anything, you know, just to get those moisturizer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was one point when I didn't I didn't have gloves on and I was detaping and I got ink all over my hands and then by the end of the day I had like a ton of random ink on my hands and I just doused my hands in seven oh one. And does uh, it yeah, it does the job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I remember we were crossing uh when we were in the stockyards, me and Joanne, a bunch of people were going to get the ice cream, like we talked about. I told that story the other day, and we were getting ready to cross the street and Bruce 
Quintavo Bruce was getting ready to cross too, and I grabbed Joanne's hand because we're crossing the street. I want to make sure she's safe, right? And I saw Bruce over there all alone, and so I go, Bruce, grab my hand, you know, make sure you can get across the street safely. And he goes, he grabbed my hand, and then we're crossing, and he says, oh, you know, you need to, you need to moisturize, you know? And I'm, and I'm like, I know, I know. I, didn't, I don't have any easy way on me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Right. You need to keep a little little spritzer of uh, mm-hmm. 701 in your pocket. Yeah. That makes sense. It does. But Bruce, you know, everyone knows me as soft, soft handy. Yeah, yeah. Well, apparently Bruce is doesn't think so. Soft, right? <laughs> yeah. Bruce is softer mm-hmm. compared to me. Uh, 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 oh, action engineering makes accessories printers need. Like squeegee rubber and pallet rubber and sleeve pallets, regular pallets, and all the things. Nope, not good enough. And the world's best printer accessories. No, you're supposed to name one of the things they make. Uh, so all the different job carts and hmm. the uh, just one. Uh, One's good. Okay, so. sorry. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> so yeah. Mm-hmm. I just trained somebody yesterday how to use the uh, the squeegee replacer thing. Quick squeegee replay. Oh, the squeegee replacer thing. Yeah, uh, quick, quick clamp. clamp? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that. Maybe you need a little bit of this. You want to take a I, sippy sip? I got a little you want sippy, sippy sip? sip of this right here. here. Hold on. Get your mouth up there. Get your mouth up there. A little sippy sip. A little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> look away, everybody that's watching this right now. Fucking look away. Don't, don't, don't you can't unsee this. <laughs> Tell me when you're done. Wait on you. I'm done. Come on, come on, look. <laughs> you fucking asshole! Stop. <laughs> <laughs> what's the, what's the problem here? <clears throat> I was all fucked up. Mm. By the way, I'm drinking um, a horse semen, a Grande Van Cream. Yeah, Man Cream. Van- <laughs> <laughs> Van- <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> um, uh, 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 uh. And I should be. I, I'll tell you what. If Starbucks wants to, all it would cost them, this was like five fucking dollars. All it would cost them every single day would be five dollars. Not every day, once a week, basically. Five bucks a week. Starbucks, can you spare five bucks a week? You just give me this free once a week and I'll talk about it every single week. Vanilla, uh, our grande vanilla cream cold brew. Iced. Always with the ice. Did you know? Uh, oh, yeah. So as far as action engineering goes, level up your shop at actionengineering.com. Yep. Next, we have graphics source. And, you know, it's that time of year when most shops are super busy and your art department is in overtime. So go to 1-900-HOTSTUFF.COM and get in touch with Nick or Lucas. And, and what, Dylan? Level up your uh, art room. There you Get go. Get the help you need. Exactly. <clears throat> How do you say document? Document what? Mentary. That's right. Hey. Hey. He hopped right in. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. We don't know how to control this, but you are, <laughs> which is what I consider on time. You're like three minutes early. Yeah, so this is perfect. Yep. But we are. We got one more. <laughs> sponsor to do and you can help us with it okay okay who do you got uh we have chromaline and here's the thing choosing the right emulsion for your shop is complicated and that's why we love chromaline you've got questions they've got answers you like that isn't that someone else's slogan already? that's good probably <laughs> it sounded familiar it just it, it sounds sounded like good. fucking it did what is it I gotta look that up now. Someone else has that slogan. It's like fucking Allstate or something. That's Allstate. They are, you know, Allstate just <laughs> yeah, bought Chromaline. Right. 
Um, but but here's the thing. Oh yeah, the last part is give them a call or go to chromaline.com to watch Kevin's videos and to learn all about the screen room. Dylan, guess who's guess who today's guest is? I don't know who. Will you tell me? Yeah. So today we have <laughs> <laughs> Scott Headbloom from Elite Inc. in Davenport, Iowa, and Scott's already here because we're using this new software, which we really love. But um, super easy to use. Yeah. There but you we go. don't know how to and let people in. We don't. We don't know how to do that yet. And this brings me into a topic that uh, Printavo recently discussed, and that is virtual assistant. I think you need one, Dylan. Okay. I need one. I don't Scott? trust it. What do you mean you don't trust it? So, what do you mean by virtual assistant? Um, something we're kind of <laughs> interested in is graphic source. Um, we haven't officially pulled the trigger yet, but it's one of those things that what they offer is kind of a lot of where our bottlenecks are right now. And I mean, I don't do, do either of you guys use them? Mm -hmm. I do. So what do you, why do you think you want to, where is it bottlenecking exactly? Or how is it? Um, mainly right now, just designs, separations. Um, we just got the auto coder. So that's helping a lot with our screens. Those are, I mean, we pretty much got everything automated in the screen room, except for, you know, we don't have like the, um, the auto washer, I guess. But other than that, I mean, we've got the CTS now, we've got the auto coder. Um, so yeah, the screens, the screens, we can pump out a lot. Um, it's just, like I said, that the designs, the, um, the art online rate. stores too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Just pretty much the, the design aspect of it. And then separations are, are starting to become, you know, a lot because right now it's, it's, I'm doing everything from design and separations. Um, but as soon as I drop that file, we're actually using, um, we've just got it set up to drop our, our, um, EPS files for our I image. We just drop them right as production files into, um, for Tavo, you know, and then that's pretty much where my hands are off at that point, but everything before that, that's where it's, it's starting to become a struggle, I guess, as we grow. So have you tried to hire somebody or are you just trying to go more with graphic source because it's the way to go? Yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, you, you pretty much eliminate, I mean, obviously there is some training involved, you know, just to kind of introduce our processes, I guess, but it's not like, I mean, trying to find an employee that, you know, knows how to separate, a four color job or something. It's, it's tough, you know? Yeah. And it's like, that's kind of where they're already, you know, trained to do that, I guess. So they've kind of already got, and I think something that, um, I believe his name's Lucas, right? Mm -hmm. I think is what I've did. been talking to. Um, you know, they're, they're trained to do that stuff already. So, um, and they, and I, I think one of their, their selling points is that they're, they're already in, or at least they're familiar with screen printing. You know, so they're not yeah. pumping out art. That's just a big patch of, of white ink. They kind of know how to use colors to, you know, for like knockouts and stuff like that. And then obviously the separations too. So yeah, well, it's stuff that they do all day, every day. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's what their service is. Um, I mean, for us our I, we had those same concerns though. Like we were, we thought, okay, fine. You can, you know, you can help with design. But when it comes to separations or like our shop, the, you know, our nuances that we like, um, how do you know, for example, to separate for a 180 mesh or, you know, two whites or a 230 mesh and all this stuff. Um, but, you know, there are, um, I guess there's probably a two week period where you guys, where we figure all that out, you know, so you're on a, you're on constantly the way our designers work and way we work with graphic sources that we have. A lot of our designers right now work with three computers or at least two. And you know, so you have, we have this computer with Monday, we have a computer with design, we have a computer with graphic source, but you don't have to have three computers. You can just have different windows. And we're always on Skype and you're always communicating back and forth. And a lot of the communication is with memes even because they're humans and it's fun <laughs> to be, it's fun to have fun, you know? And so, um, but during that two week period or maybe it, it, it's shorter, maybe it's longer, but you, you iron it all out and get it figured out so that 
you know, because you're with the same, you get your, uh, de the same designer. So it's not like you're getting different ones every day or anything. You get somebody who's familiar with your shop and what your shop uh, wants your, and needs. And there's different levels of designers that they have. There's junior level designers and maybe they don't do SIM process steps. And then there's senior level designers and they do. And so sometimes, you know, maybe let's say if even if you get even if you have the junior level and they can't do something they can't set whatever file you give them then it escalates to somebody else and somebody takes care of it you know what i mean and so they have different levels of service you just choose the one you want we've chose one called um it's called halftone hero which is just this unlimited you know it, we, we that's get, the highest that's the highest mm, one right yep it's like 2900 a month or um, 2999 yeah there's different at different times there's show specials and things like that so ours is slightly less i think we pay like 2600 because we signed up during a, okay. a special you know um which by the way if you do that that's what is that 400 if we pay 20 that's only like almost 400 a month that's like 5000 a year cheaper <laughs> you know if you do that yeah um and so maybe maybe look for one of their show specials but if you don't then that's fine too it's uh totally worth it i mean how much are you going to pay um, to train in a, a designer, you know, um, which we oh, do have yeah, a lot more. We also have that. I'm not saying we can, we got rid of all of our designers or anything. We have three designers, you know, uh, in addition to graphic uh, source. So you're just using basically, it's just like that 2,900 or whatever, 2,600. Mm -hmm. Is it just like for one? And then you can get, do you just have one person basically from graphic source and then yes, three right. designers on top of that? Okay. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But that's all you would need. You know what I mean? Like, one, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Mm. Right. And the thing is, is, yeah. too, is, it's not like, it's not like if you, if you hired someone off the street and you taught them that job, they have that one skill level and they, they have to like slowly grow to learn all these things. Like you said, Andy, like if you give them something and that person can't handle it, they have someone right there that can handle whatever you throw. Them. So it's, so, so it's still pretty much hands off, you know, right. for us, right. Which would be great. Yeah. How, but, how much, so, like, so if you got, uh, you know, if you were able to, um, you know, let's say offload, you know, half of your art or whatever, what would, what would you do then with your, that time? So right now the, my main focus, if, you know, I could get some of that stuff off my plate would be more, um, on the marketing, social media side, um, email marketing, you know, we try to post as much as possible, but that's another thing that's all on my plate right now. Um, you know, we've got Instagram, Facebook, doing a little bit of TikTok. Um, we got like a LinkedIn. We don't really update that too much, but it's a lot, you know, trying to do all that. Then plus, you know, email marketing, plus just doing the, you know, the different other strategies, all that stuff. Right now, there's just very limited time for that we're just getting all this, you know, the growth that we're experiencing right now is just, you know, word of mouth. Um, we're really fast. We've got a few competitors around the area that, um, you know, we hear it all the time that they're two, three weeks out. And usually we're about a week, sometimes, you know, a little bit less than that. So that's kind of how we're, I think, starting to get, you know, more customers in this area. Uh, we started, that's your, yeah, I, that's, I guess that's your, one of your competitive advantages. I have, a, I have a question. So how, what percentage of shops do you think, um, are in that same situation where they're spending more time on their business, like in their production, whether it's, you know, doing art or on press or washing screens like Dylan did the other day, what percentage of shop owners, I should say, do you think are spending their time, you know, in production or on, instead of growing their business. I bet it's pretty it's high. Very high percent. Yeah. What you, what was sure. your guess, Dylan? I, I bet it's high. I mean, realistically, like, like I feel like I'd say 90 or more. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably pretty close to 90 would be my guess. I don't know. So, I feel like, I feel like it's just one of those things like not, there are definitely the people that want to work on the business and not in the business but there's also people who like doing it you know what i mean they like there's a, why do you think many, that is why do you think they like it i don't know it gives you a purpose gives you something to do like they don't want to just be uh in the office or you know 
sitting at home or whatever they want to be on press or they want to be in it you know what i mean they want to be up and on their feet and doing something and being productive so yeah i, I think know. i think you're right i think it's not necessarily that you want to be at home or on the beach you know with my ties or something i think that i think as shop owners especially in this industry we get you know we start small and we're in the day-to-day and we actually, like you said, we like it. You know, we like it for a, var- a variety of reasons. We like it because, well, maybe we like screen printing. It's fun. Or maybe we like um, washing screens or whatever it is. We like that. And also we like the idea of just the, maybe managing that, you know, because it is, you know, you get to check that thing off pretty easily. Like, oh, I have this job of 30 shirts or 60 shirts or whatever. I printed, it's done, It's I, I did it, I accomplished something. Whereas when you're trying to grow your business, that's hard fucking stuff, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. complicated and there aren't like instant results. You know, you could, you could like you just said, work, work on marketing. You might not see any return on that for uh, a month or three, or, or you may not even know, you know, if it worked it, it sometimes. And so well, is it, it the gratification? Like, yeah. It was just like me yesterday cleaning screens like it was just and i know you did that too you do that too andy you hop out and just run the ecotex and it's kind of like it's just satisfying to like to get it done you know what i mean like it's you have a dirty screen on one side and you prep it and run it through the machine <laughs> and put it on a rack mm-hmm. and it's done and clean and ready to go it's like i don't know it's the same for me it's like mowing the lawn like it's like a task you know you can complete and feel good about it's like I don't know. I, th- yeah. I feel like that's the soothing part of it. That's the therapy part of it is you can actually knock it out. Whereas I if I was in the office doing marketing or whatever, it's kind of like you do work hard on a bunch of stuff and you put it out there and you like just cross your fingers and hope it fucking works. Yeah, I think it's and probably most half of the time that. It's it probably half. <laughs> It's probably, um, you know, a combination of things. It's probably like, yeah, you like, it is satisfying going and and finishing that, that task, you know, but also sometimes it's just a matter of like you yesterday, you had, somebody had to wash the screens and there was nobody else but you, (laughs) you know, so you Mm -hmm. really didn't have a choice. So maybe it's part, it's obviously part of that. Do you have an Ecotex, Dylan? I have a Blue Water, which is, they're all just a auto reclaim, but I mean, I could have pawned it off on somebody else, like. Bill did end up helping me out with it, but I just wanted to do it. And like I told Andy before you got on, is it's like, I kind of want to do it anyway, because then I found like some things we could do to improve. You know what I mean? I would never know that Mm -hmm. unless like that person in that role told me, but they don't, you know, they get, they get busy and comfortable in their spot. They don't, they might not know what's available as an upgrade. Um, so me being in there yesterday, I have like a, like a, you know, five, six notes of things that I want to tweak or fix to make that job more efficient and better for that person. So, um, I'm glad I was out there. It was, a it was a good, it was a good thing. Mm-hmm. But back to your virtual assistant thing. Have you ever tried one? Um, so yeah, not really. Um, right now we're, we've got a guy that we work with that's awesome. Um, he does our digitizing and vectorizing both. Um, it's just one of those guys we've been working with for, I'd say probably three years now. He's, you know, a hundred percent, he's under 24 hours, um, six bucks for both the vectorizing and digitizing. Um, so other than that, I don't even know if you'd call that necessarily a VA, but other than that, that's really all, that's all we've done. So, it's definitely something new for us, but like I said, I talked to Marcus or Lucas. Um, I talked to him a few months ago. Um, and now I just kind of starting to bring up the conversation again with him. Um, the main reason actually is because my wife right now, she works with us and we're expecting twins. Um, December 23rd is actually the date. Congrats. So thank you. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a fun Christmas, but so she's working for us now. Um, you know, she's trying to kind of work as long as she can, I guess, until they're here. But, you know, obviously once they're here, her hours are going to be very limited. You know, she probably won't be here for a few months at least. So it's definitely going to be a a change uh, in the business. And that's kind of why we're starting to think about, you know, just even the things that she's doing right now, she's mainly doing sales, but 
you know, that turns into answering the phone, quoting, um, you know, putting jobs on Printabo, stuff like that. So it's a lot. Um, and we're just putting, you know, month after month, we just continue to grow and it's something that losing her is going to be big. And we're just trying to figure out kind of the next move as far as what we're going to do without her. And then, you know, my hours are going to be much more limited as well. So it's kind of like a two at the same time, you know, I'm not going to go fully off the grid, but, um, I won't be able to put the hours that I am in now. So, so it'll definitely be, uh, a yeah, big change for us it, it makes perfect sense i mean andy was busting my balls about virtual assistant because he's asked me to call spectrum about my internet for the past like three weeks um and it's <laughs> on my list it's genuinely on my list of like things to get done but my list of things to get done has been slacking over the past two weeks because i've been out of town and then i get back and then you put out fires with certain things and i've just been a little yeah overwhelmed but um I don't know. I've thought about it for other things though, too. I've thought about it for like outbound sales reach stuff. I've thought about it for, I don't know, just the tasks that I got to get done. Um, but I also just like, it feels like another task to try to find someone to do that. So it's like, I don't know. I guess, but once you have, you know, that person, you know, more than just, I think a virtual assistant there would be super helpful for, um, you know, the shop owner, just as just what we were talking about, uh, actually, because we were talking about how we get involved in the business and we don't spend time on, you know, like marketing or whatever you want to spend your time on or need to spend your time on. The same thing goes for everything else. So, you know, you, instead of, you know, calling Spectrum or, I don't know, paying a certain bill or uh, arranging for your dentist appointment, personal stuff too, you know, instead of doing all of those things, yourself somebody does that for you and then you can spend the time on marketing or you know what i mean so i mean yeah. i think that whatever that costs whatever uh virtual I think assistant I'm just costs hire an assistant well that's like what real, basically that's, that's that what that is though here. the reason why you can do a virtual assistant now is because they don't have to be in your shop or even in your city or your state yeah. you know, they could be anywhere and you know they could do all of this stuff remotely and i don't know i've always thought about it and now I'm way closer to actually doing it. Well, you do it, you try it out, and then I'll use <laughs> who you're using. And then uh, that's the way it works with everything, Dylan. So yeah, that that's we share. The, that is the method. So you have um, Elite Inc. and you have it with. Is it you are partners with your brother? Yep, he's the other owner. Um, he's actually printing right now in the shop. Um, like I said, he's. Uh, he's leaving for Nashville this week and we are just absolutely slammed right now. So he's trying to get everything he can knocked out, you know, all the jobs that we've got lined up from, from uh, last week just to kind of get all those done. So we've got a fresh plate for next week. So is he kind of the production manager or is he um, doing he's just, the, yeah, he's, he's pretty much just the printer. Um, he prints everything we've got. Basically we've got a, we still have our manual, um, but then we've just got a, a six, eight diamond back right now. Um, and we actually just got a, we've got a dryer on the way because our, um, our dryer is actually starting to kind of become a bottleneck on jobs that are just, you know, those black front left chests that are just really, uh, really fast. We're starting to kind of slow us down as far as the dryer goes. So we mm -hmm. finally just decided to, to pull the trigger on that. So we can, we can run as fast as we can on those, on those jobs that, you know, bog up the dryer. You're trying to set the shirts in, you know, a certain way just to get them to fit. Oh yeah. So we're basically doubling the size that we have now. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be nice. How did you guys get into this whole thing? You know, we don't really have a, it's just kind of a boring story. Um, so okay. I actually went to school for, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not like, uh, I don't have like a crazy story, I guess, but, um, so I went to school originally for engineering. I actually started in graphic design. Um, so I went after, after a little bit of graphic design at a junior college, I, um, went to a university and got my degree in engineering. And then I, um, I spent about 10 years in manufacturing, um, before kind of doing the business full time for about, I would say four or five years of the eight years that we've been in business. Um, I was doing both. 
So actually I just recently quit my full-time job. Um, I think it was February of 2020. So like right when COVID kind of started, I think March 2020 was when it kind of started to get, you know, more serious things start shutting down. So it, it really wasn't the best timing, I guess, but looking back, everything worked out. Um, I feel like, I feel like that's getting brother. to be a common story though, is like COVID seems to be like a kick in the ass for people. You know what I mean? Like they, they either go for their dreams or they go for a hobby that is, is turning more profitable. Um, I don't, I feel like it's just one of those times it's like 2009. Like you hear a lot of people start their shop in 2009 and I feel like it's that recession that people were like, well, I lost my job doing this and this looks like something I can take on and then they do it. And then they, we talk to printers and they're like, yeah, I started in 2009. It's like, yeah, like that's, I just feel like COVID's another one of those now where people are like, well, I decided to just go all in. Yeah. That's what, that's what made him kind of make the jump. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, anyways, it started, uh, my brother's kind of the same way. And actually when we first started in our hometown, um, our parents were involved there. My mom was a teacher. Um, my dad built houses, but they were kind of at the shop just because it was, you know, we, we grew up in a small town, so it was pretty much right down the road. Um, so about four or five years ago, my sister, she left us to start working for her husband. Um, and then, you know, slowly, but surely we kind of just start out growing, um, before the shop we're in now, we are actually in my brother's basement printing for, I think we were there for about two years um, and we all just had full-time jobs and we're kind of doing it on the side. But, you know, eventually my brother worked at Deer, uh, John, John Deere for I think three or four years, you know, when we had the business running as well. So, and then he finally kind of decided to do it full-time. So, so yeah, now we're both full-time and um, we've got my wife as well. And then we've got one other employee. Um, and I actually met him at the the previous job that I left back in February of 2020. Um, I worked with him there. So, you know, I saw how, you know, his, he was a, it was just one of those employees that, you know, just working with him, kind of seeing how he operated on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I just knew that, you know, when I left full time that he would definitely be a good candidate for an employee. And, um, you know, it just kind of worked out one day, he texted me, I think, and he was kind of hinting that he was getting ready to leave and if we had any position available and it just kind of worked out. So he's been with it. us now yeah. for, yeah, he's been with us for a little over a year now. Um, so are so, you, so are yeah. you the younger or older brother? Younger. You're the younger? Yep. So I'm uh, 33 and my brother's 41. So is he the real boss then the older brother? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess you could say that. <laughs> Why? And then, actually, the, the, the real boss was, was our sister when she mm -hmm. was, because uh, like I said, she was involved for the first, it's hard to keep track of these years, but I think she was with us for pretty much three, four years, about half the time we've been in business. This, this March will be eight years that we've been in business. So I would say she left about three, three years ago, but she was the, she was the real boss when she was with us, but. No, it's kind of it's kind of interesting that you have like a whole like family affair thing going. Like, why why screen printing? Like, how did that come about? You said you did graphic design, but like, how do you get go from you doing graphic design to manufacturing to you, your brother, and your sister now have a screen printing shop? Um, I think one part was we were all heavily involved in sports, and you know, throughout even, you know, maybe we'll, or, you know, elementary school, junior high, all the way up through high school, we would see all these different shirts being printed because we would obviously get them at the different events and tournaments and, and all that stuff. And I think we just kind of came up with the idea. Um, we realized that, like I said, we're from a small town and there was no screen printing business in our town. You know, they were buying stuff from those surrounding bigger towns yeah. you know that had established businesses but there wasn't one in our town so we you know we realized that our schools and the businesses from our town were, were buying shirts somewhere and they were going to outside towns and so we just decided to i think that's kind of what made us 
So one you know, drunken really night the, playing cards with your brother and sister, you're like, hey, you know, <laughs> we should start a business together? Yeah, like I said, I wish I had a better story for for you, but it's it just kind of no. I mean, it's we interesting. Were, we were all kind yeah. of working, you know that that corporate that corporate job. I guess just mm-hmm. wasn't after a few years of it. It just kind of wasn't wasn't where we wanted to be. So yeah, how was the dynamic though with uh, working with brother and sister? You said your sister left. So was that like she found something else? that was a calling or she to... actually um it's she works for her husband now so um it's a it's like an agriculture business they sell anything from seed to i think like herbicide fungicide just all kinds of different chemicals stuff like that um and they're actually one of our biggest customers now too so awesome. it kind of worked out for us and worked out for her it was it was uh you know we hated to, to see her go but Cause like I said, she started with us and she was the, she did a lot of the customer service related stuff. Um, you know, ordering, uh, things like that. So you've got to somehow get that deer account, start printing for mm. them. Do you know anybody there? What, uh, actually we, so the, the company that I, I left in February, they were a big customer of ours. Um, it was actually a, a tube bending, uh, business. But they're actually literally like right down the road from us, one of their plants where I think they make like the the earth mover stuff, not the combines. That's like right across the river. But I think we've got like four or five John Deere locations within like a five mile radius of us. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely something we've never tried reaching out. Um, probably should. But can you imagine? It seems like, like if you printed for them, you basically stock yellow, green, white. <laughs> And then yeah. only print that always <laughs> because it would be such a large yeah. account, you know, that'd be so, thing I is, would love that. Actually, you should try though. That's the thing. You never mm. know until you try. Like there's accounts that like I've gotten that like I never thought I would, but it's just because I tried, you know what I mean? You you think yeah. that like they have everything on lock and then you actually get a hold of the person in charge and they're just like, mm-hmm. I fucking hate this person. This person sucked. <laughs> this person didn't pay attention. Yeah. This person's, you know, like, you know, that's the truth of it. It's like, you know, I I don't know how to describe it, but it's just like. Or you find out they're ordering from Custom Inc., you know. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. They might just be doing it online and they've just got something set up where they just click a couple buttons. But, yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll definitely put that on my list. I think okay. of that every time I go to Trader Joe's because they their team wears all these, like that shirt you've probably seen. And I think, you, you know, how many, they must, every location probably gets a couple hundred shirts a month or something, you know, because of, think of that, like employee turnover. And then just also if you're wearing that for your uniform, you need a new one eventually. Every, you know, you want five, every every employee wants five shirts at least so you can do the wash once a week or whatever. It's probably a mm. giant ass account and maybe it runs through a promo products company. Maybe, who knows who who's doing Trader Joe's stuff, but if you got that account, basically you would just print that, you know. Right. It's the same account. for any of those companies mm. though. It's like McDonald's or Arby's or whatever. It's like every time you go there, the employee has a different like theme shirt on or something that's like mm-hmm. for whatever promotion they're doing and it's like somebody's fucking printing that chick-fil-a shit. is another good one yeah we actually print for chick-fil-a although it's local really? you know like they're opening every time they open a new one they um you know they get a shirt for that um and then also we print for mcdonald's but it's not it's not typical stuff it's like their senior shirt so every anybody that's a senior graduating high school and that work that works at mcdonald's um we ended up just printing for one because there's like a you know how mcdonald's is franchised and so there was i think there was an owner that owned maybe 10 mcdonald's around here and so we printed for that and then we did a good job and they're like all of a sudden we got turned over to the region and the state and then you know it just grew into a lot more um but it could just it could maybe even somebody like trader joe's is is just that it's not you know one printer printing for the entire corporation it could be just split off into other and then all of a sudden you come in and consolidate who knows i mean it could be could be a great it's funny you say that like you mentioned mcdonald's this is kind of a side thing but like a buddy of mine that i went to high school with kind of contacts me every so often asks me like business advice and stuff like that and he he started his own powder coating company Mm -hmm. and uh same thing like 
he would have just random people come in and be like, oh, I want these wheels for my car powder coated or I want my bike frame powder coated or whatever. And he went to, they were building like a new McDonald's uh, near us. And like, they came to him and said like, hey, like we want you to powder coat all the metal chairs for our location. Like they, I don't know why, but like they just have these custom McDonald's chairs, but they, they weren't painted or powder coated or whatever. So he did those and then he, did a great job and like all these other mcdonald's started contacting him and he was straight up like the only business he had for like <laughs> years mm-hmm. was just doing mcdonald's chairs like it's so like you know what i mean you get into a business and yeah. you're like oh i love powder coating i want to like do all this cool shit and like <laughs> every day he does fucking mcdonald's chairs and so he he hates that or loves that he doesn't do it anymore <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like, and I remember like when he told me, he's like, yeah, I'm done doing this. I'm going to go back to like a corporate job or whatever. I was like, what? Like you were set, but I kind of mm-hmm. get it too. It's like, he's just doing fucking the same job all day, every day. Cause it's such a big job that he's probably just like, fuck this. I don't want to do this mm-hmm. anymore. But yeah, I can see how m- maybe that would turn into something, you you know, monotonous or, you know, maybe you don't want to do that. Yeah. That's, and it kind of goes back to the screen printing thing though, too. Like I've got somebody right now that I'm like quoting, but I'm also hesitant on like, if I want to do it or not, it's like I have something like 75,000 shirts. And it's like, who? <laughs> and it's just like, do I want to, do you have to go? Do I want to, it's not even a price issue. Like the price is whatever, but it's just like, do I want to do that job? Because you think about how much time it takes. It's multiple location. It's not like 75,000 fronts. It's front, back, possible mm-hmm. sleeve. And it's like, that's just going to be a huge wow. suck on production. Do they have, um, is it a large turnaround time? Because you could, if I got that order, if I bid on that order, I would probably do it in pieces. In other words, I'd probably, yeah, I, wouldn't, I would I'm do not 25 do at a time or something. And I would do 25,000 fronts, then backs and whatever you said, each location. And then yeah. that would ship. Then I'd bring 25 in after mm-hmm. that. You know, I wouldn't bring that's exactly, 75. That's exactly how I would do the logistics on it is mm-hmm. I would do like a pallet at a time and I would do the front and back. So I'd be like, do the whole pallet front, do the whole pallet back, wrap the pallet, put it in the trailer, do the next pallet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like just so it's like we're not moving 30 pallets forward, printing, moving 30 pallets back. I would just be like, just do one pallet at a time knock it out and then if we have to do other jobs on that press for some reason then do those jobs and then go back to doing another pallet like we we're mm-hmm. gonna have months to do the job it's fine it's just one of those things i'm like the staff's gonna hate it like it's money and job security. Five thousand shirts <laughs> and it's for like a runner thing it's like a company that does races okay but they do races like all oh. over like nationally so it's like they just order the same shirts for every race for the year and it's just it's just what it is like it's not a hard job it's like white shirts um but it's just like i said it's one of those things like we're used to printing like 50 pieces 100 pieces 500 pieces a couple thousand pieces and then tear down set up and listen to music and doing different art projects and now I'm going to be like, hey, this one press is going to be dedicated to this job for like <laughs> two months. We've talked about this before. For us, um, anything under 10,000, I have pricing, you know, basically four, right? But if it's any, if it's over that, then, you know, like how your pricing goes matrix goes, it gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And then it gets to a certain po- point where it, now it's getting more expensive, you know, right. because just the whole everything that goes into printing over 10,000 shirts is uh you know more difficult so it has to cost more it's just storage of shirts or you know just the whole process it's way harder yeah um so i have i have another question for you guys we how do you make your customers feel special <laughs> or do you <laughs> hmm other than the only thing I can think of at the top of my head is just getting them their order, you know, very fast. We like to go with the, the the shock, I guess, of, you know, they put their order in and sometimes we can get it done in two days. And then, you know, I was dropping an order off um, a couple of weeks ago, actually. It was that uh, 
four color. It was a CMYK process job we did for a, a chocolate shop. Um, and I think we got it done in like four days. And it was one of those that, you know, they brought in a shirt, um, and they, they explained the last time they had these run, um, they took over like three months and it was something that they were supposed to have done in like December and then ended up being into February. So yeah, I think just trying to, you know, really get stuff turned quick to where it just leaves them, you know, in shock. And I think that's, that's one of those things that really spreads as far as, you know, word of mouth. I think when you start doing that a lot and that kind of becomes the norm, um, I think people start talking, especially when, like I said, a lot of our, uh, competition is, you know, that two, three week window. Um, so I think it's just starting to kind of get out that, you know, elite inks fast. So I think that's kind of, we like to take advantage of that, I guess. Yeah. The whole component of faster than they expect, you know, that's really the key probably is that like you said, last time they placed an order wherever they placed it, it took a long time. And then here you got Just the order. Un under promise over deliver. Yeah. And so that that's yeah. a, I'm, that's definitely a good way to make them feel important, you know, and special. But yeah, Dylan, do you have any, do you have anything? I, I mean, everyone says something. They're like, oh, our customer service or our quality or whatever. And I mean, to a degree, yeah, like. I feel like we all try to have the best quality we can have. We we try to do things as fast as we can. We try to have customer service, but I feel like, I don't know, for us, it's just, we try to excel at all those things as best as we can, but I feel like what keeps customers coming back and what keeps people coming here is just like our, our vibe, I guess, our culture and our, when you call us, we aren't robots or whatever or just what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> we're just i don't know us like i feel like when someone calls here they they look forward to talking to whoever they their rep you know what i mean like whoever they dealt with because we're friendly and we try to do what we can for them i think that's pretty much all i would say like is we try to do it really well and we try to befriend them. Yeah, I think um, I think it's one of the most important things. And I think that, you know, as you as you're trying to grow your business, if, if you are trying to grow your business, I, I suppose even if you're just even trying to sustain your current level of business, sometimes I overlook, you know, as the shop owner in I think I overlook how important it is to make the customers or the clients feel special. And, and maybe even sometimes I do the opposite, you know, like, oh, I'm so busy. And then you're interrupting that busyness. And I want to, I find myself, maybe sometimes I even think those thoughts, but I don't mean them. And, and maybe I don't even express them and I hope they don't, they don't read through it or anything like that. But I try to spend that time with them because the reason why I asked this is because yesterday after you know, um, after work Friday, we went out to eat on our way home. We stopped in this place that we go to a lot and we, and we knew them. We've been there. I can't, I don't know, countless times. And when we got there, we went before we even sat down. Um, one of the servers that knows us came up and he hugged us like we hugged, you know, <laughs> at a restaurant and he, and he, and when he hugged us, it wasn't even just like a, one two second it was like a five seconder you know like we were exchanging energy and then uh we sit down and they're they're nice we order our uh, you know an app or something like that and then they bring out an app and on the on them and they said this is hey um you know try this out i was like holy you know like fuck like that thing was like 20 bucks or whatever it was like imported it was uh burrata flown in from italy that it's da fl flown in daily <laughs> Yeah, like they have this uh, cheese that they fly in from Italy daily, fresh every day. And they serve it on this toast that's grilled with some garlic and olive oil and stuff. It's fabulous. But they just gave us that. And I thought to myself, we need to do way more of that sort of stuff. Like, why don't, why aren't we like ultra giving, cut? yeah, like, why aren't we giving, you know, regular customers just giving them stuff? on a, you know, because that for us, you know, what does a hoodie cost, you know, 10 bucks or whatever. 
if we just throw that in or maybe even embroider it instead, you know, and, and stitch it out with their lug one and just, hey, this is, thanks for coming here. Mm-hmm. You know, I need to do way more of that. Do you guys do any of that sort of stuff? Yeah, we do that all the time. Um, I feel like that's what I mean. It's just like befriending them and trying to make it more of a partnership than it is just them being a customer is like just i feel like going above and beyond as much as possible and that's why i said one of the things is just kind of like like with the breweries and we talked about this a couple weeks ago like i'm trying to figure things out for them that they haven't thought of yet like the whole like let's do let's handle your inventory and let's uh do this and like here's some new styles or call sns or broder or whatever and send them like new new things so that they are on top of it rather than like we just sit around and wait for them to place an order Mm -hmm. um stuff like that you know if they're like oh i'm in a pinch or hey like we went and did that live print at fucking that luma festival and like we didn't make jack shit and it wasn't about that it wasn't about going and making money it was about going and supporting the big brewery that we do a bunch of stuff for it was like literally me and chris spent two days of our lives printing shirts for them at this event and it was just to support them not to like go and make money and do this it was just we want to make sure we're doing a rad thing for you so that you know that we appreciate you and respect you Mm -hmm. how about you i think another easy one is just um something i try to do as much as i can is you know when when we post on social media to tag that customer um you know, just for, even just for general exposure for them, you know, we, we run like a lot of ads too. So if they see that, you know, actually that, that chocolate shop that I was talking about, um, we made a post for that, you know, we ran an ad around their area. So I'm sure a lot of people saw that, you know, saw that there was t-shirts available cause they haven't had any in a very long time before that. Um, and it, it seemed to get a lot of exposure, you know, people were commenting, how much are they, you know, where can we get these? And then they would jump in and, and reply to those to those comments. So it's kind of like a, like I said, just a way to get that business name or whatever it may be, if it's an event or whatever, to advertise for that. Um, and again, it's just a simple, you know, post on social media, tag them, and I think that is something that, you know, we we should do probably more of. But um, like I said, it just kind of goes back to that. It's hard to to find time to. Mm-hmm. to do the social media and the different marketing stuff like that. But I think that's just an easy strategy to kind of make the customer feel, you know, special, I guess. What, uh, what's next for elite Inc. Like, what do you, what do you want it to grow into? Um, that's a, that's a really good question. Actually. Like I said, we're, we're going through some changes right now. Um, I think as far as growth, um, like I said, we've got the dryer come in and I think the next move is going to be a bigger press. Um, we've got a, a six, eight right now and we do a lot of, you know, two color stuff, three color stuff. Um, we definitely do a lot of black and, and white too, but it's those two, three, four revolutions that are just killing us, you know, and it's, it's to the point where, like I said, we're, we're growing, um, so fast, I guess that it's just kind of a necessity at this point to where, you know, we can set up two, three jobs or have that, you know, three, three color be one revolution instead of two. Um, oh, it's for just sure. going to be huge for us. <laughs> yeah. You've got to be able to send something around. That's the biggest, you, you know, it takes double the time or triple in, in, yeah, in some cases. And so exactly. do you have room for a, a larger press or would you just get a second auto? How, how would that happen? um so i think we're definitely gonna just only have one i think we'll sell what we have now um just because you know m and r presses obviously are they go fast and they're not they're not hard to sell so i don't think that'll be an issue um and then we would just bring in a bigger one and why why that would strategy have to move some stuff around um i think it's we would rather um i guess having two presses means you have to have you know minimum two press operators and a bigger press you all you already have because right now how we do it is if it's a two revolution job my brother will just print it by himself load and unload and then probably even catch he'll just go back and grab them while that second you know revolution's going on the shirts he just loaded once you step into a bigger press you have three people 
I mean, dedicated to it because you always have someone catching, loading and unloading because everything's one revolution. So it's one of those, you know, if we got a bigger press, there's three people right there. Um, after my wife leaves, we only have three people. So (laughs) it's either, you know, if we had another, uh, if we had two autos, we would just need, you know, at least two more people. So we would just rather at this point, at least I think go the route of one press, three dedicated people, and then try to get everything in one revolution. That's kind of the goal. Yeah. That would, that would seriously increase your production. Obviously you would be probably, you know, outputting double, but you know, at, as Dylan and I both know, before you know it, you're going to be in a spot where you would love to have that six, eight, and then also your bigger press because you would be like armed and dangerous at that point, you know, because you can, you can have that one color or whatever going on that six, eight, and then complicated stuff going here. And especially in your situation with your brother on press, he can very, you know, um, easily, train and oversee whoever's running the six eight so let's say your brother goes to the larger press right he's more experienced or whatever he could have he could train in and have somebody run that six eight just one color stuff you know even for the first whatever six months you know and graduate to the two and then all the you run everything else on the larger press i mean that would be a long term anyway that'd be a great position to be in <clears throat> my, yeah my I, opinion. I, I back to your original question i don't think we could fit to in this shop that we're at now too so that then then that kind of goes back to just being able to fit it but yeah i mean i definitely see the the advantage of having to um and we're we're at a position now where um we're leasing currently we're trying to find um you know a place to actually buy and the market's obviously just not good right now there's not much out there and if what is out there is just so expensive that it just doesn't make sense um but yeah we're definitely uh, right now we've got six thousand square feet three thousands like the front we've got a little showroom um our screen room and then um, we have like an embroidery slash screen storage room Mm -hmm. and then the other three thousand is the press uh the shop where we've got you know our press a bunch of tables set up that's kind of where we you know boxes come in and stuff like that so we're definitely outgrowing it um when we get a bigger press in here, it's going to be tight. Um, but yeah, then after that, it's, we're not going to be able to get any more in here. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully by then we'll be able to, to find something bigger. But, um, yeah, I think, I think that's kind of going to be the, the move, the next move after, after the dryer, I guess. Right on. Your focus, you said was the marketing and all that stuff. Is there, is that your plan is to just focus on that stuff and kind of kind of go with that or are you trying to get somebody to take that over as well to where you can be home more with the kids and you know focus on the business that's uh i think that's definitely future future state i guess kind of the next move i think is getting someone in place i guess to you know just slowly but surely replace myself i guess you know find all those tasks that i'm doing on a day-to-day basis you know, just, just getting graphic source or whatever it may be in place to kind of start eliminating those. And then, yeah, I mean, eventually it might be where, you know, we do have someone here for marketing or, or social media or email marketing or, or whatever, whatever that may be. But I think the next step is, you know, the design, the separations, um, those two right there would just be huge. I mean, right. especially when they're, in Printavo, you know, I'm sure all that stuff's tied to just status changes. You know, it just goes straight to them. I'm not sure exactly how all that works, but um, yeah, I think that's that's kind of the next step. And and after that, you know, side of it is is off the list, and those things are being done. I think that's when, you know, maybe we start looking at something else. But I think that's going to be the next move. Right. We have um, we had something come up twice now in the past two weeks so um and i and it's been such a long time and our proofs have evolved you know over the years to protect us from this sort of thing but do you guys have have you ever had a customer approve a job and so our proofs they have the um below the proof below the t-shirt it has the design the size so let's say it's 12 by 12 inches, you know, wide by 10 tall. We'll have that on our, our proof, 
but we yep. also just put the image on a shirt. And so it may look like this. Here's an example of a proof and it may look like that. So do you, have you ever had a customer say, oh, um, look, my, the design's way too small. You know, I, I saw the proof and it, you know, it filled up the shirt and now here I'm picking up my hundred shirts and the design's too small. And so obviously, I mean, oh, well, I guess you can, it's not that obvious. You could proof the design on every single size shirt from small to three X if you wanted, but we choose, we choose to do it on a medium. And I think now we're going to, we're going to say that we're doing it on a large mm -hmm. or, or something. And, and I want to, and then we talked to the design team um, at the end of the day yesterday and was like, look, maybe we should just err on the size of small, <laughs> you know, or something because the customer was like, look, I want it to be more. I want it to fill up the shirt more. And we were at 12 inches. We were right. So they approved 12 inches, but it just didn't look like that on the shirt when they picked up and especially on a, this was actually on a, on a sweatshirt. And part of the problem is, is that when they're picking up and they're flat. looking at it, I yeah, exactly it's flat, you know, so it's, they're looking at they it, it's flat. It there's not a body in it, and so you have the 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 sides, you know, that's in in the you image too. Told them, you should have told them to measure their nipples. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the distance between their nipples? Yes. Hold on. My my go to is um, if I have a customer that I sense is uh, particular about size, I mm -hmm. guess I always tell them to just grab a tape measure. Yeah. And just yeah. you know, grab a tape measure, see what that twelve inches looks like. Um, but yeah, we've over the years, I mean, we've, we've came a long way in our proofing process, but mm -hmm. we're, they're pretty bold proof. I mean, the only thing we list out, um, sizes, just like you were saying, Andy, we've got, uh, mock-ups, we've got swatches showing what ink colors are going to be used. Um, it's pretty in depth and we usually don't have any problems, but like I said, when I have anyone that's, I think is going to be picky about size or they're already making comments like. You know, can you make that smaller on the mock-up? We just say, you know, this is our standard 12 inches wide, grab a tape measure, you know, and let us know if that's going to be what you're looking for. Dylan, the distance between your nipples isn't necessarily the distance between my nipples. You know that, right? I want a nipple dock up. <laughs> is it 12? <laughs> it's no, got to be saying, close to 12. I'm just saying that, like, that's my biggest argument with a customer is, and hold on, I'm going to go back. The mock-up form, like you said, Andy, we've gone back and forth on this, and we I, I can't remember if we talked about it with you or if it was a discussion we had when I was at Gildan, was I I like using mock-ups on my, on my form, the, like the ones from SNS or whatever, where it's kind of like on a mannequin. You know, it doesn't have the, like, popping out the neck or out the bottom, but it's, like, formed for a body, not a flat because I mm. want to show them what it actually looks like on a human body. Um, because if you do the flat thing, the print always looks smaller because it's flat. And what customers don't realize is that human bodies are like round. And once you put it on a human, <laughs> it's a different fucking size. Like I wear a 2X, okay? And this print mm. that's on the front of my shirt right now comfortably fits my chest. Like it's, it looks like it's supposed to and mm. whatever this is a 10 inch wide print hmm. oh i was gonna say 11. right but i'm just saying is like okay. yeah. if i was to measure my chest as a large fucking man a large ape man and i wanted to have a 12 inch print on there <laughs> that 12 inch print if i put my arms down mm. is from my armpit basically to my other armpit while it's down is a 12 inch print. I get it. So I need to be, when customers come in, we need to be measuring their, their breasts, yes. their, their nipple. You distance. need to grab all of their breasts I see. and mm -hmm. take a Good tape advice. measure and put it up to their nipples and be like, where are your nipples exactly? <laughs> um, so no, I'm just saying that's that like, that's where the edge of the design is going to go. Right, and that's how we keep our clients. Um, no, I, I think it's just, <laughs> it's just one of those things like you, you need to actually like have it on a person, but what I was going to say about That's the mock-ups. That's how you make your customers feel special. <laughs> right. I like to do a little yeah, tweaky actually. tweak. Right. <laughs> um, but, but like what happens? So I even explain it like this, like, look at what's on Scott's, you know, like it, it's hard. Some people don't want it 12 inches. Some people want it four inches like he has. That's, on a shirt. that's you know so it's that's what they tell you to make it's you feel tough 
it's t- it's tough, dude. Like, uh, and so my my thing is, we don't have access that I know of anyway to shirts on a mannequin, you know, on a body. You're, well, you're, you're saying you're, if you're downloading, like if you go, I mean, there's sites that have it, but like, like SNS, Samar has them. SNS, mm-hmm. like pretty much what our thing is here is like if somebody wants a shirt, we go to SNS and I, on my mock-up form and f- from when I first started it, basically I have a, I have a, a folder in that Photoshop layers. That's like every time I add a new shirt that I've never done before gets added to there and then saved so that when I go there mm-hmm. quick, I'm like, Oh, I can go to yellow or I can go to whatever color and it's already in there front and back. But if it's not in there, I go to SNS and I go to that shirt and I download the front and the back. And then I add it to the template and then it's like I said, it's kind of on a form. And then, but what we've done is basically like you said, Andy, is we have, we have on the form, it says on the bottom, like placement shown, like if it was a, you know, a size large or whatever. Mm-hmm. But what we did is we just measured a shirt in real life, like put a ruler on it, made a grid. And then we kind of digitally took a picture of it, put it in, aligned it with that shirt. So that way, when our art art team puts the mock-up together, they can make it more to scale. So they can like pull the design on the grid to a ten-inch wide print, and that's what it shows up as on the mock-up. So like, the worst fear is like you said, is you get a customer that says, "I want my print to be uh, eight inches wide, like a circle or something," and then customer service puts it on a mock-up and they just make it like way too big. And then when the customer approves that mock-up, they're not looking at the 10 inches on the bottom as a note. They're looking no. at the mock-up of the circle. I think that's just it. They pay and more attention to the it, visual. Right. And then when they get it, it's not the same visual. So mm-hmm. as I'm saying, your visual needs to be more accurate to the actual size of the print. So that's why we use the grid is because then it's like, this is what it looks like on a tubular human being. Mm-hmm. And this is the pretty accurate sizing. But like I said, nine times out of 10, if that customer's like i don't like this This is too small or whatever it's like just put it on please Mm -hmm. just fucking go try it on because that worked on the second one or so the one that happened yesterday she tried it on and said we're good like it you guys are great um and the one last (laughs) week (laughs) the one last week um we replaced i told them that we will fix at no charge to them the xls and up um, I felt like the larges were fine. There were 80 larges and they were comfort colors. And so I wasn't going to you know, Ooh. offer to replace that. And they actually ordered and paid for 80 larges. I'm normally ma- fixing everything, but I was like, look, it's, it's fine. But they were like extreme and, and how big, how much they bigger they the wanted. The other thing it, though so- too is I feel like the, there's this feeling that like, if you're a bigger person, the print needs to be bigger. Which is like, I kind of get to an extent, but it's also like, if you're a bigger person, like if you're like a 2X, a 3X, a 4X, whatever, your body's more round than it is. You're more, you're wider and more around than you are fucking like your chest is about the same size. You know what I mean? Like most of that fabric's going to the side of you and the back of you, mm. not necessarily your chest. Like I said, I'm a big dude. I wear a 2X and a 10 inch wide print looks good on me. So like why mm-hmm. would and this, this 10 inch wide print looks good on a small. It might actually look kind of big on a person wearing a small. But like for me being this big, if even if I was like a 4X or a 5X, like my chest isn't going to grow. I'm not going to fucking be four feet wide. And I guess, but that's us as printers. And we all, we all, that's our opinion. You know, like we agree that Mm -hmm. 10 to 12 inches. And I tell people like 90% of our prints are within 12 by 12. We do oversize, of course, you know, sometimes if it's just a, let's say it's a, a thinner print, we'll go tall, we'll go 15 or something. You know what I mean? We do print larger or can, right? but most of it falls within 12 by 12. Typically, I'm because just saying why? if, it, if the because... average Joe comes in and is like, I want a chest print and this is the mm. logo I have, like our go to is like 10 to 11 inches wide. And you do that because that way you can fit smalls just fine. It's just, it just it's a good look for everything. Mm. Like mm. I could be like, oh, everything's 12 wide. And, but it's like I said, if you're if you're wearing a size small and it's your name, then the first letter and the last letter are going to be gone in the armpit. Hmm. It's like just do so like it's, it's hard too because 
a lot of stuff like if it's one of those designs that's like a perfect square or a circle mm-hmm. you know 12 by 12 looks huge a circle like circle is way different you have to look at a circle yeah. you have to look at a circle as like you have to go way smaller than you think you do yeah like it's it takes up way more space than you think like if i was to just put a circle on the front of someone's shirt and it wasn't something they wanted really small or really big i would start off with like a maybe an eight or a nine inch wide circle instead of a 10 or 11 inch wide just like you know like horizontal text thing because the circle in general is going to be like way it's going to take up way more than you think it is which is why we made that shirt that we have in the front office and we have at everyone's desk that shows like different circles mm-hmm. and a left chest and triangle down or and everything it shows everything on the shirt and you have that too and you don't you don't you have yeah. like um cutouts yeah we have film that show i think about four different sizes of every shape whether it's a square rectangle you know triangle because let's just say you have a line of text you know like this that's um 10 to 12 wide and only like two or three tall or whatever it looks small you know it's not taking up a whole lot of space mm-hmm. on a shirt and so usually you enlarge those a little bit uh, we do anyway it's tough they're like there's no one answer you know i wish there were but that's why i just think like giving the customer <clears throat> visual so subjective right and totally. that's why i feel like laying things on a flat shirt is I don't like it. Like I don't, (laughs) I get that it looks cool um, for like streetwear and like stuff to like show online, but Mm. like it's not realistic because it's not how it's worn. It's not how it looks when it's on a human being. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's deceptive. Well, I think we're, we're going to upgrade our proofs. I don't know if that if we do it on a person, I don't like the idea of people's faces you know no i don't do that at mm. all I, I don't use the human i'm just saying that, like they do that thing where it's like the photoshop like it's mm. on a mannequin and they cut out like where the top of the mannequin comes out mm-hmm. or the bottom and it's just like a, a round shirt right i think the biggest thing is the grid i would recommend to anybody is like make a grid on the shirt of like realistic proportions mm-hmm. so that way when you mock it up it's accurate to size and you're not showing the customer that you're just that's the grid's not on use. there we're just using it like it's a layer we can turn on and off mm-hmm. of right you know size it shut that layer off send them the mock-up and then because what it, what you want is you want for that customer to look at that mock-up and approve it because nine times out of ten they're not reading fine print they're just like yep looks good and then mm-hmm. when they open the box they're like oh this isn't what i saw that you sent me and it's like well because it wasn't accurate but they don't know that they don't know that we're just like winging it and like you know we just want to get it into production we want to make it exactly what it should look like like even if i do a vintage print for a customer and i take their artwork say it's white with like distress pattern on it i always drop the opacity to like 75 percent because i know in real life that's what that print's going to look like on that shirt i don't just leave like bright white with a distress pattern on the shirt i drop the opacity so that when it's printed and it's like thinner ink and the shirt starts to come through that's realistically what it looks like Mm -hmm. that's a good idea just try to make it more accurate so well you said you you got an auto coder recently in fact i saw i think you got it from frank yep yep i got it from frank i think this i think he said this was it was either his first or his second unit that he sold so i think they just started selling them through like i said i think chroma line sells them Mm -hmm. i'm not really sure as far as how the logistics work but yeah it's it's made by grunig um we got the unicote we got that quoted but it was like about eight thousand less this one was we saw that grunig where did we we see it andy we saw it with multicraft with dave Remember, Dave was showing it to us. He had okay. it on his display. Well, so you, um, it was installed a few weeks ago or something, or maybe a month? Yep. I think, yeah, about a couple of weeks now we've had it. So maybe, uh, I think this is week three, actually. So How did that change your yeah. dark room, screen room? So that's kind of where, you know, slowly but surely uh, replacing myself, I guess, and trying to eliminate those, those tasks that I was doing. Um, I would be the guy that coats the screens. Right. So, um, it's just another thing now that is pretty much fully automated that, you know, Dan, our non-family member employee, 
can do. Um, once that production file is dropped on Printavo, um, we've got a task group set up that basically says, you know, coach screens, print screens, um, and he can do it. It's it's hands off for me once those sets are done and once those files are, are dropped on Printavo. So it's really been a game changer because now it's just another thing that um, I don't have to do and screens just continuously flow through the process without you know minimal communication too because everything's tied to to those tasks and that automation so it's been good <clears throat> um like i said it's so far so good no issues with it and did hopefully it, it ca- coats thousands of screens right right did it improve your experience with cts you know has it you know because when you get the cts you want it especially the i image you want it to be as flat and as smooth as possible um, and as equal, you know, EOM as equal as possible. Is that even as, even as good as I've, I've coded infinity screens manually, <laughs> but when I got mm-hmm. the auto coder, it was instantly the very first screen was better than any screen I've ever coded, you know? And so how, how has that changed yeah. for you? It, it, it's, it's definitely a, a huge positive change. Um, yeah, like you said, no matter how many screens you've coded, it's, you're not a, you know, you're a human, you're not a robot. Mm-hmm. There's always going to be variability in it, whether it's, um, you know, how hard you push in, if there's emulsion coming out the sides or, or whatever, that pressure is just going to be inconsistent. And it, we definitely noticed, it seems like the prints, like you said, off the eye image are, are coming off better. Um, they just, the screens just look better. They, they wash out better. Um, you know, you don't have to deal with that that line on mm-hmm. both sides where that when you manually coat that you're sitting there with the pressure washer, you know, trying to blow those things out, those aren't there anymore. So it's just a clean, you know, it just comes right out. It's a, it's a thinner coat of emulsion before um, we got the auto coder, we were doing uh two, one coating. So mm-hmm. using less emulsion, um, we actually just switched to uh chroma line blue so before we were using Elano orange and Frank just said, Hey, I'll give you a, it actually <laughs> came with the coder. It was like a deal they were running mm. like three and a half gallons for free. So we've been using that. And, um, like I said, so far, so good. Um, three and a half. Just, what do they have a half gallon a changer. or is it one size three? And uh, a, why would Frank give three and it's, a half? It's, it's Frank, one come big on, container. The half gallon, the half gallon <laughs> was in a Ziploc baggie. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure now that I think about it, maybe it was three, but I no, I think it was three and a half <laughs> gallon. Yeah, it's a weird it's a weird thing. To but, ask him about that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, now we're gonna start just getting them by the gallon. Mm. You had Kevin there, didn't you? Yep. Kevin and Frank both came, so it was uh it was one of those days that it was humbling, I guess, to say the least. I mean, we learned a lot. We got everything dialed in, our exposure times um and yeah they were out of here by went and got lunch but it was a you know good morning good afternoon and you know next thing you know we were coating screens so oh yeah it went well it's awesome well man uh do you have any questions for us or shop hacks yeah i'm just is it so did you guys both um what's kind of the backstory on both your guys's company sure kong and it's upstate right mm-hmm. dylan yeah did you guys both start those yourselves? Yeah, Andy's on round two. Um, <laughs> I had a business before this and sold it and went and worked for somebody else, somebody else's shop and learned a few things and just kept it going and moved back to New York and started Upstate in 2009. And I've just been going ever since. Um, and tell my and- story for me, please. Do you want me to tell your story for you? Yeah, yeah, let's hear, let's hear. Uh, Andy was a dirty hippie with dreadlocks Mm. and decided screen printing was the way to go (laughs) and uh, started his shop uh, and uh, with his wife. And then Mm. he, that whole thing happened. And then he started Shirt Kong later on. (laughs) That whole thing happened. He skipped over like all this, like a decade. (laughs) I was going to say, what was before Shirt Kong? Just the whole thing. The whole thing happened. And then now it's Shirt Kong in 2009, same year Dylan started. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful story. Beautiful story, Dylan. What was was before Shirt Kong? 
Uh, okay, so I started in a garage, in, in, in my garage, uh, you know, with a manual press that I built, actually, and um, grew that and then eventually put an auto, auto like an m &R. We bought a, a Gauntlet 2 and installed it in our garage. We were on a dead-end street, so we were able to, to get away with this. And... Um, uh, eventually built our own, our first building and I can make this a really long story. So yeah, one day we woke up and had, had breakfast and I really <laughs> like my eggs over medium. I'm not an over easy guy. Like your boy, okay. your boy likes the yolk to be runny, but not like too runny, you know? So it's not the, it's not the yolk. That's the problem. It's that the mm -hmm. white, like you need to make sure all the, all the white is cooked. Are you an over medium yeah. too, Dylan? Yeah, I am. Fuck. Yes. If you're over easy, <laughs> then we can't be friends. Well, Although over Joanne's yeah. over easy. <laughs> sunny that side sucks. up is what grosses me sorry, sorry, Jojo. Yeah, sunny side's disgusting. I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> it's like slime. <laughs> um, sometimes you know they used to. They actually made it illegal for a little bit. Do you remember that? Like you couldn't order sun. Like you go to the restaurant and in in if like you wanna, if you wanted a sunny side. Yeah, they said, "Oh, sorry, you know, we, we you might this might kill you," and so instead they st they said they had to make it over easy. That came, became, was a thing, but um, but no, yeah. And so we grew that, and we built our own building. We moved into that, and um, I went through a divorce, and then I moved to this state where I'm from, the my home, my home state, and uh, restarted everything. And I thought that was going to be easy, and it wasn't. It was crazy hard. So, um, you know, because it was weird we get used to like right now, you've been in business for eight years, Dylan, you've been in business for 12 or whatever it is. Same here. We're used to these orders just coming here, you know, like, you know, once you're in business for that long, enough people know you and there's enough word of mouth or whatever, there's the phone rings or you get an email or whatever. And it's like, Hey, it's a hundred shirts. And you're like, you just take that for granted. So when I restarted, I had all that in the past and I restarted and then the phone did not ring. I did not get any emails and nobody even walked in my front door, you know? And so I was like, Oh shit. Like I forgot, you know, like I spent all that time growing the business and now I went back to zero, <laughs> you know? And so we started wow. starting over was really, tough because I thought I, you know, like I'm a great printer now. I've been doing this for so long. This should be easy. And it wasn't, it was, it was hard in different ways. Um, but yeah, so we've, so here we are now though. But you did some and, things differently though. Like you didn't have to go back to starting with a manual in a garage. No. You yeah. I started right with an auto day one. An auto in a warehouse. Mm -hmm. Like you right. skipped yeah, the, the beginner too. steps. That's true. So we accelerated, you know, a lot of that growth and, you know, because it, I was in a garage for five years, you know, and so here instantly day one, I'm in a space, which was great. Um, and you and so, hired and stole your new wife. <laughs> yeah, we, I met her at Lowe's and she, you know, put in her, uh, well, I, I was building this out and, um, you know, she was a kitchen designer and she, uh, you know, I went in to buy this, uh, our front counter and she was who, who helped me. And so this wasn't going to be ready for four months, but she said she wanted to work here. And I said, I'll think about it. And then, uh, I said, this yeah. is your story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. True story. And, um, okay. I said, you know, instead of, um, coming to work here, maybe we just get married. And she said, okay. So we got married. <laughs> not just kidding. That, that's part, that part's not true. We did get married, but it wasn't until years later. Um, but yeah, that's hired how, her and then said, the only way she can keep her job <laughs> is if he she moves in with him. Because obviously she would never, under any other circumstances, say yes to to me. <laughs> like, have you ever seen Joanne? Yeah, have you, you ever hunt? Yeah, <laughs> she's she's absolutely gorgeous, and you know, uh, I got she lucky. Just needs, she just I, needs that paycheck. Yeah, so I'm, she's way out of my league, but I she was in a in a bind and she needed a job <laughs> <laughs> she was sick of Lowe's, huh yeah right. yeah she 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 didn't want to wear she that hate, apron anymore she hated Lowe's that much <laughs> blue right. one the color right 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 <laughs> um uh so do you have any other questions <laughs> i don't think so i appreciate you guys uh having me on yeah right. dude. this was good you we have quick you, take yeah and I can kick it off with Scott. What's the first okay. thing you do every morning 
What do you do first? Uh, start my pot of coffee. <laughs> as soon as you roll out of bed, it's on your nightstand. Start yeah, pretty coffee. much. Yeah. I was <clears throat> watching a uh, documentary. I think I said that, pronounced that Ment- correctly. Mentary. <laughs> and it was. Um, it's a guy named Andrew Huberman, all about sleep and our sleep cycle. And he said, don't make coffee the first thing you drink. Make it, um, and, and don't drink it right away. You, know, you need about an hour. Your body wants to wake up. And I don't have all, I'm going to, I'm going to watch this like 10 times because it was that um, important, I think. But you, um, you want to, you want to, you know, let your body, before it gets caffeine in it, your body needs to process a few things without caffeine and it's better off instead of, you know how a lot of people say they crash like it after lunch or whatever and they have that caffeine crash or whatever that is. If you just wait and put it off an hour, drink some water like Dylan said or something else and then wait for that caffeine to come in, um, you you don't experience that same crash. Just to, just some um, advice. But don't change your first, okay. don't change up your routine. You can still I, put I, that. I don't, I don't drink it. I just push the button. There you go. So yeah. I should say before that, mm. multivitamins and water. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I like that. That's Perfect. me too. I get up before mm. I walk out the door. I don't, I take I don't some drink vitamins. the coffee until I get to the shop. So no. water. Yeah. Yeah. Are you watching any shows right now or reading any good books? Um, Game of Thrones. Um, the new one is it's not as good it's kind of hard to get into i don't know if you guys are game of thrones fans don't ruin don't ruin it for me i'm a couple (laughs) episodes behind okay okay what do you think of it i mean compared to it's not it's not it's it's not og game of thrones it's it's not it's in the same vein it's in the same feel it's a different show like it's yeah it's not quite the same um matthew whatever his name is the the uncle cousin or uncle brother or whatever he is he definitely steals the show like he's like the the one who does the most i'm behind because of all the travel i've been doing so like i haven't seen the episode where it skips ahead 10 years like where she okay. goes from being the young actor yep. to the new one so you can say whatever you want to say from their back but don't ruin anything for me <laughs> okay. going forward um, gotcha. It's all right, though. I mean, it's worth okay. watching. It's one of those things like me and uh, a bunch of people from work back when the original Game of Thrones was on. We just got together every Sunday. We used to do that with Walking Dead, too, before it got like monotonous and stupid. Uh, we just get together every Sunday and watch an episode and make dinner. It's like a big potluck thing. Um, so we're doing that again with this. So now on Sundays, we're skipping every other week. So we're watching two episodes at a time okay um and then like this sunday we're making this sunday we're making barbecue and like i have to bring rolls and a dessert and whatever and we're gonna watch two episodes so i'm gonna try to catch up somewhere okay cool you don't watch andy all right next i don't uh no i never watched the first one either because i didn't want to commit and waste you <laughs> yeah, know like whole, ten thousand hours episodes. of my life so for sure um, yeah uh so what experience as a kid do you think contributed, you know, most to your success as a, as a shop? Did you say what experiences? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or just one, maybe is there something that stands out? Um, I would say, uh, just watching my dad, I guess he was, um, an entrepreneur himself. He, um, had a business, he built houses for he was doing it part-time up until a few months ago um he's 71 so he did it for almost a little over 50 years um and just seeing you know how hard he worked and seeing him up you know super early every morning um and just putting the hours in to make you know his business successful um i think that's one thing that's really stuck with me i guess throughout my life and you know, up to today, it's just the work ethic. It's definitely a different, yeah. It, that's just to, to generalize it, I guess, just that work ethic of, you know, what it takes to, as you guys know, run a business. It's very hard. So that definitely helped. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think life comes down to just a few moments? You know, like, 
of course we we you know we you have every day and you do and you do things that maybe sometimes are exactly the same you wake up you make your coffee you go to work you print some shirts you go home have a sandwich go to bed and then do it all over again but do you think that there's certain things in life that comes down to a few moments you know i was watching this show and and this and this dad this mom and dad were out um watching their daughter go up on stage and sing it was a voice competition and you i could so the mom was like really happy and excited you could see her face and then the dad was just like straight face serious kind of watery teary-eyed and I could tell because before when that before the girl came out to sing, she talked about her anxiety and all this kind of stuff. And this is, you know, she was she'd never really done anything like this and let people hear her sing. But I could tell the dad knew, like, man, this is a super important po- moment in my daughter's life, and he probably would have just given his life, you know, for her to be successful right there in that moment. And so. You know, do you think it came, comes down to that? Because if if they, you know, turn their chairs and say, yeah, you know, you're, you're audition, you're on the show, or if they don't, that's like, she goes, her life goes in a couple different directions, you know? So I don't know. I watched that dad and I felt that, I felt his, like that energy of how serious that moment was. You think that ha- that's true? I think so. I think there's, I think I could probably pick, you know, five or 10 pivotal moments in my life that gave me what I have now it's like when I started like being in this industry like I was in a band and doing that stuff and I just worked like some bullshit jobs but then the opportunity came of like Lindsay buying a pack of buttons <laughs> like if she wouldn't have bought that pack of buttons I probably wouldn't be here you're saying the buttons like, were how you eventually even moment. got into yeah like she literally shirts. like went out to the mailbox came in opened a package and it had a hundred one inch buttons in a baggie and that baggie literally fit in my hand like a palm <laughs> in the palm of my hand mm. and then she told me how much she paid for them i can't remember what it was in, in my mind i feel like it was something stupid like 60 80 bucks or that. Oh. i was like there, and then i instantly was like there's no fucking way like there's no way this is 80 dollars mm. And then I went online, like literally that night out of just rage and like found the button maker and like all the parts. And then I was like, well, if she's, if this company's making $80 for this handheld baggie, then I can easily make that money because I'm in a band and like, I can sell them at shows and I can sell to other bands. So I literally bought the button maker and the parts that night. And then it snowballed into selling those and selling stickers and selling shirts and then i've literally been doing that ever since that's rad so you like still if make she did, i have everything to make buttons i will not make a button right now like I, <laughs> okay. fucking, it's yeah. so beneath me right now um but yeah like if that didn't happen i don't know where i would be like i i don't, don't know if i would have had that spark to be like fuck this shit i'm gonna i'm gonna make these and then nothing, that's crazy to think that's happened. crazy to think that it could be true and if and sometimes maybe the hardest thing is recognizing that moment you know so if you didn't recognize or take action or whatever it was if it didn't you know like you said it sort of pissed you off that you, it was 80 bucks for this that made you go look to see oh i could do this you know for cheaper or better or whatever it was you know um it's weird you know sometimes it's right there in front of us and we don't see it you know, so I don't mm-hmm. know. Just a thought. Uh, next question. I think, or he probably answered that. <laughs> yeah, he did answer this question. Uh, one press or ten presses? One press. I like one it. big. The big one the big, big ass press. press. <laughs> made, one big ass yeah, press. One big ass press. You know the biggest yeah, okay. press that? Um, well, there's a new press. Print Print United in Vegas is two weeks from now or something like that Less and they that. are coming out they are um not coming out but they are demonstrating they're demoing a new cobra and this cobra is called the cobra tse and i wanted them to call it i campaigned king like cobra. i fucking wanted king cobra but it didn't happen dude i pushed for that so hard Thank why you. didn't they do well it makes perfect fucking sense like it, <laughs> i'm irritated <laughs> I'm irritated so, that it's not called the King Cobra. So yeah, here's what it means. And I'm looking it up because, okay. So T, uh, sorry, TSE stands for tri sync equipped. Now this is pretty good. So this is neat because 
I was like, Jimmy, what do you mean tricing equipped? Who fucking cares? Yeah, we're all the presses so are tricing. The registration is three sides. Almost. So you know how so you know how we um, lock our board in. Do you have tricing, Scott? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So the, the two pins, yeah. bottom and right. Well, what I mean is this the, has bottom right and left. The board, with the, the pallet that you put on, you know, when you lock the pallet yeah. with with the wings, it can it can shift slightly a little bit. And so, let's say you lock down. Yeah. Let's say you are um, regging an eight screen job, an eight color job. So you reg eight screens, and what happens if a screen pops, or something happens on press, and you have to change out that screen? You're re regging all eight screens. It doesn't take long, but you we re reg eight, the eight screens. Well, this new TSE press. You don't have to do that because it's the the tri-sync palette is locked in. There's one special print uh, print palette arm, I should say. So that special palette arm isn't winged in. You know, it's like it it locks into place. So your tri-sync palette will lock and not move. It will always be the same. So that you mean it just stays on press. Mm. That's one of your pallets is the... I don't know. Is that what you mean? Oh, I don't think so. I haven't seen it in action. <laughs> so you're but still like taking it I on and off. I think so, but the taking on and off process is more precise. It's always the same when it locks in. And so, okay. um, you know, because now if, if it's loose and we're tri-syncing, that's bad. You know, part of the problem with, you know, tri-locking tri and registering a job with tri-lock is complicated because there's a lot of variables that go into it. And a lot of people say oh, it doesn't work, but if you take care of all those variables and make sure that everything's good, it does work and it works it really, does really well. It work and it definitely works. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but one of the problems is, is that you have a loose palette and you go register eight screens or four screens, doesn't matter. That's not gonna be exact, right? It'll be close, but not exact. And so you wanna make sure that palette is locked in and, and, and doesn't move. But when you lock in, everybody knows when you lock in a pallet, the way M&R works anyway, your pallet could be ever so slightly different or not, not perfectly straight. So you have to mm -hmm. measure for that and, um, um, and, and make sure it is right. But my, the point is, is this TSC equipped is pretty cool. And I asked Jimmy, I said, hey, can I buy a, a pallet arm and put it on all my presses so that they're all TSC equipped? And he said, <laughs> yes, but it would, be, really? it would be expensive. You'll have to buy a whole arm, you know. <clears throat> but he said, yeah. Uh -huh. Anyway, I don't know why I'm saying that, but how, how big long, are they? Long story, oh. super long. It should have been <laughs> fucking called a King Cobra. Should have been a King Cobra. The, and the, so the press they have out there is going to be 18 color, 20 station, um, mm. and it has the new, which um, I've been beta testing, is the the new um, membrane switches. Uh, yeah, the new membrane board on the print heads. What's that about? Uh, the membrane switches are. Uh, a way to control the print and flood speed and lock of you know, locking of your frame, all this kind of stuff. They're going to switch to um, next year, I think it is. Is all Cobras will have it? <clears throat> um, it's like a digital. Still tweaking a couple things. I'm trying to talk them into uh, want something slightly different and how it steps. So, for example, right now you have a, I think it's called a potentiometer, maybe. Um, anyway, you have a, if you want to increase your squeegee speed, you have a, a dial, right? And you just dial it up. And mm -hmm. now it's more of a, just a, a button. So you go, you can push it like this, right? And it goes in half steps. So 0.5 every time you, you hit it. So it'll go one, it'll be 1.5, you know, two, 2.5. And so our complaint is, is that the difference between one and 1.5 is too much. You know, sometimes you don't want it. If your squeegee is moving this fast, and you don't want it to go that fast all of a sudden, you know, so we need, I, I want the yeah. either, I want to be able to step up slower or just make that difference um, less, if that makes sense, then increment less. Mm -hmm. Long story long. And it's not a knob now. It's button. It won't be a knob, which is really great in some ways because like, let's say if you have a knob go bad, well, that's a hard, a harder replacement part because you have to feed the wire and solder sometimes all the stuff right well um with the membrane switches it's just plug you, you know i have them right here Hold on. Where are you at? so i have you can always keep a spare and they're not expensive so here it is and so this right here like let's say if uh, let's say if your squeegee speed um you know they'll say this for whatever reason has doesn't work anymore which by the way we've been running we've got several hundred thousand prints on this press 
has never gone bad. But if it does, you just plug this in. We actually had one go bad a few months ago, and it was it was definitely not an easy fix. It's not easy. It takes you got to feed the wire through the print head, you know, to the. Well, this way, it's just at the end of your print head, and you just plug that in, unplug and plug in. Yeah. And it's this thin. That's nice. <laughs> Look at that. That's crazy. And it's cheap to manufacture. And so here you have. Um, 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 that's like the light, your LED on your press. LEDs, yeah. This is the locking of your, you know, when you flip your head up and then come down, you, you, you have a diamond back. So I guess it's a little different. Yeah. I was going to say, we don't have that. It's very annoying that we don't. That's one <laughs> other reason that it's time to get a bigger press. All, all the other presses. Side, side I, know you, I know what you mean though. Yeah. You, yeah. your head comes up and then when it comes down, that's what that lock right there is for. This is to print while you're okay. at, while you're at your, you know, the station. And this is like a, your reset, you know, like it's the same buttons that are on your press now. Green button. Yeah. 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 All right. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Finish her off, bud. What's for dinner? Or lunch. Yeah. Right. Mm. Or breakfast. <laughs> Salmon on the grill. Oh, that sounds good. How do you do it? Will you put a little butter and lemon or how do you? What's your go-to? You know, uh, just just a little oil, and I've learned the trick is you just uh, you get skinned, skin side down, and then I think it's only it's like six minutes, two minutes on the other side, and it's done. So it's hard to it's hard to keep it all together, you know. But I've tried it all kinds of different ways, but mm. I think I finally got it mastered. I think that's so. two in a row. Their last guest said salmon too, didn't he? Salmon and shrimp or something really? or rice. I can't remember. So something like that. Pete. Went to uh went to Hibachi with Lucas uh when we were in Fort Worth and said to the Hibachi guy, like, hey, like I have a I have a seafood allergy. Uh <laughs> you know, could you cook my food like you know, separate or keep it away from the other stuff, or whatever? And they were like, Yeah, like I guess I do it all the time. So then he gets to the table and he has this big plate of like everybody, what they ordered basically, like the meats and some people got shrimp or I don't know what it was, like fucking lobster tail or some shit. And uh, he tells everybody like, hey, this guy has a food allergy. I have to cook his first and then I'll cook all your guys' stuff. And then uh, I was like, okay, cool, whatever. So he's got, you know, he's fucking got his tongs and shit. He's like, ting, 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 throwing shit around or whatever. <laughs> And then he he grabs the the big plate and he goes to grab my uh, filet mignon off the thing and he drops it on the shrimp pile. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and he just like he just like immediately looks up at me like hoping I wasn't paying attention to like you know just throw it on the grill and then uh, I I was looking right at him so he's like fuck so he like <laughs> so he like grabbed another piece of meat and like yeah did it again and it was just like. It was just funny because he had that like little kid look up like, oh no, like, right. Like I messed up. So you're that sensitive. So. Like it can't get anywhere near it. I don't, don't even know, but it, like I, I had to take a fucking flight at like four in the morning the next day. So mm -hmm. I really didn't want to be like throwing up and having diarrhea on the airplane. So right. I was like, hey, yeah, it's such a big gamble. Separately? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, whatever. But Andy, what are you doing for dinner tonight? Chili? Oh, that sounds good. I should do that. I did that last Sunday. I probably would do it tomorrow, but we are going out to dinner with uh, some friends of ours and a place. Nice. I don't really know what they have. It could be, so I, have, I have no idea. I didn't choose the place. Somebody else did. Oh. It's called okay. the Fox. Pizza? And, Italian? I don't know. It could be pizza. It could be tacos. Could be anything. <laughs> the Fox. Yeah. It's called the Fox something. I don't know. You're just eating a fox. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they have. So <laughs> it's basically. It's you don't fox. like, you guys don't eat fox? My daughter is having uh, friend, friends over it. tonight, so I think it's just pizza and wings for me. Mm, that sounds good. I'd be down for well, that. Well, thanks too, for coming so on, hopefully. dude. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully yeah. we didn't hinder your Thank Saturday you too much. No problem at all. Appreciate you guys having me. Yep. Have a good one, yep. dude.